So look at number 18. Let's do the slope field and we'll, we'll work all of 18 and then we'll talk about solving differential equations. Um, on the axis provided, sketch a slope field. Okay. Um, I'm going to do some of the easy ones first, like if x equals 0, then the slope is 0. So if x is 0, the slope is 0. And if y is 0, then the slope is undefined. Now remember, that doesn't mean that there's nothing there. It means undefined slope, which by definition is up and down, vertical slope. And I think that's all the easy ones I've got. Now I've got to go kind of point by point. Um, I had been starting in the top left, but yesterday I switched to start starting in the first quadrant. Everything was positive. That way I don't have to worry about signs yet. And so I don't know. It doesn't really matter where you start. Uh, 1 over 1, 2 over 2, 3 over 3 is all 1. Let's see. So 1, 3. That would be 1 third. X is 1, Y is 3, 1 third. Yes, okay. And then 1 half. Or no, that's, that would be 2 thirds. This one would be 1 half. This one would be 2. That one would be 3. Then I think I'm going to do the third quadrant next because I know the signs will cancel each other out. 2, 1, 2, 1. So that slope is 2. Slope is 3. Slope is 1 half. Slope is 1 third. I don't know. Again, I think slope fields are kind of cool because they make fun pictures. Okay, second quadrant. So x, so one of the one of them is negative. So the slopes, all those slopes will be negative. Two, negative three. You consider that to be a backward circle, huh? You, just invented, a new shape. you invented a new shape. I don't know about that. I think if you put a point down there, I think you would recognize the shape that it is. I think. S sketch a solution curve that passes through 0, 1. Okay, there's 0, 1. So we need to be uh, horizontal right there, but then it looks like on the name of that shape. You recognize that? It's not a parabola because it, it approaches these asymptotes. So what's the other thing that kind of looks like a parabola? It's also misleading because we're only seeing half of it. Because there's probably another piece down here. So what's the name of that shape? It has parabola in it, sort of. Hyperbola, a high parabola. <clears throat> no, a hyper, hyperbola. No, a hyperbola. There we go. Um, find the solution. Find the particular solution. That means um, get y by itself with the initial condition 0, 1. So this one is a lot easier than the one we did yesterday y dy equals x dx. We've separated the variables. And we'll integrate both sides. So y squared over 2 and x squared over 2. And we need a plus c on one of the sides. Um, let's 
see. To kind of make this look like a parabola, uh, let's go y squared minus x squared equals c. I did two steps there. All right, multiplied through by 2 and moved the x squared over. And I haven't figured out what c is yet, so it doesn't matter. 2 times c is still just c. Uh, now, what do I do to find c? Use that point. Use that point zero one. So one squared minus zero squared equals c. So c is one. And so my solution is y squared minus x squared equals one. Although I need to be careful how they ask the question. Find the solution y equals. So I need to solve this for y square root of 1 minus x squared. No, 1 plus x squared. Part D, sketch a solution that passes through 0, negative 1 on your field. Oh, so that's the sort of the bottom half of the hyperbola. Find a particular solution through 0, negative 1. Okay, well, I've already done the, the hard part. I can jump in with trying to find C. So, uh, let's see. Negative 1 squared minus 0 squared equals C. C equals 1. Now I'm remembering why I wanted to do this problem. y squared minus x squared equals 1. But that's, like that's the same thing we got in part C. And yet this is supposed to be a different equation or a different graph. Uh, again, it wants to solve for y. So y equals square root. 1 plus x squared. But that looks the same as what we got in part C. So what is going on here? How do I how do I differentiate these two? What's that? I kind of glossed over something that's kind of important. When you put the square roots on, the plus or minus. And here the plus or minus, the plus would be the top one. So we just kind of forgot about it in part C, which was fine, because the plus one is sort of the default one, and that's the one we wanted. But if we want the bottom one, we would need the negative one. So we have to be careful, especially with the squared. Sometimes we need to be careful about the plus and the minus thing. So 18 was a really good problem. It had float fields. It had sketching a solution. It had finding a particular e solution and even using the point to find, to find C. This last part is what we'll do today. So we're sort of leaving slope fields behind and focusing more on the, the second part of this problem, solving differential equations.